Welcome to Tune of the Month and happy April! I'm Mari Black and this month I have for you a super fun, super cute French Canadian clog. This is a very old tune called The Nightingale and I found it when I was browsing through Ryan's mammoth collection of fiddle tunes. Maybe you know it. It's a basically like a telephone book for uh, tunes. It's all hundreds and hundreds of tunes presented in tiny little font with no explanation and almost no annotation whatsoever. So it's a great place to go looking for hidden gem tunes that you're going to fall in love with and really stylize and make your own. Uh, so I'm going to play this today in the French Canadian style because that is what I was looking for at the time I found this. That's how I like to play this tune. But with very little, maybe even none, um, changing things up, you could also play this as an Irish dotted hornpipe. The French Canadian clog and the Irish dotted hornpipe played very, very similarly. And in fact, I suspect that the origins of this tune may be Irish. In fact, uh, Ryan's gave me no information on that. I could find it nowhere else. So I don't know. I just kind of smell it in there. There's a lot of shared repertoire between those two styles. So let's do it and uh, enjoy it either way you want to style it. Here's the nightingale. And if you're ready to learn it, here we go. Okay, so um, as you may know from past tune of the month clogs and dotted hornpipes, or just from playing this kind of tune out the rest of your life, the whole fun of this tune form is alternating between the dotted rhythm duples, and then the triplets, and they are interchangeable. And that's what you do to build this thing feeling fancier and fancier. You notice as I played it, it built fancier and fancier and fancier because I started to use more and more triplets as I went. And it's uh, a lot of payoff for very little work because once you get good at knowing how to substitute the duples for the triples, you can put in more and more triples and it sounds super fancy uh, without you having to like construct a whole big thing. So that's mostly what we're going to play with this month. But before we do that, of course, we need a tune. So let's do it. I'm going to start with just the basic melody, um, very few triplets, as it was written in Ryan's Mammoth Collection. And uh, I'll play two A's a little bit slowly. See how much you can pick up with me just as we're playing through here. It follows a very standard form, part one, part two, part one again, and then an ending. And we are in F major, one flat. So get your first finger back to the nut in both the A string and the E string. Ready? Two pickups go up bow. One, two, three. <laughs> Two. 
Back to part one. Ending. And that's it. You really could just back this video up and play it with me a few times by ear, listen and sound it out and learn it that way. That's the quickest, most expedient and most traditional way to learn these tunes by ear. But if it helps you to break it down a little bit more, that's what I'm here for. Let's do it. Okay, so with clogs, we're always thinking in arpeggios. They're so arpeggiated, right? So find right now your F major arpeggio. And this tune doesn't really do the bottom root. It usually is up here, right? Starting at a different, starting on the third of the arpeggio rather than on the root, root, third, fifth, root, third, fifth. So get used to where that is. You'll also need your G minor arpeggio. Right? But again, not necessarily starting on the root. And that's what's really cool about this tune. Lots of arpeggios, very few of them start on the root. They're all starting on the third. That's what gives it that kind of floaty, fun feel. All right, so here's part one. You'll notice those patterns. Two pickups go up the scale. F major. So there it is. F major arpeggio. Now here, neighbor tone. Now that is a B natural. Just for a second, a little chromatic. There's lots of chromatic work here. Now pick up and G minor. Straight arpeggios. F major arpeggio, little chromatic neighbor tone, G minor arpeggio. Do it, part one. Two pickups go up bow, up the scale from the A note. One, two, three. F major. Neighbor tone, G minor. Now notice I'm mostly separate bows for these things, but I am doing a three note slur over the neighbor tone. We do this in reels as well, and it gives a kind of like stretchy feel. Neighbor tones are a great place to do that. Check it out. Pickups go up bow, separate bows. Neighbor tone. Much more sophisticated sounding gesture than if I just played separate bows all the way through. Do it again, part one. One, two, Three. And notice my dotted rhythms are right in the middle of the bow. I'm not up here, it's too tough to control. Right in the middle about one to two inches. One more time, part one, two, three. Neighbor tone. Repetitions, just rewind the video. I'll practice with you as much as you like. In real time, I'm going on. Part two. Pick up is a triplet up the scale from your G note. Okay, so what's going on here? It's actually very simple. I have a C7 arpeggio. A C dominant seventh, which is C major, with an added seventh, in this case, your high B flat. Yeah, so check out, pick up. It's all C7, do it again. And then I'm going to land in F major on triplets. And that's a wonderful little gesture, appears in clogs all the time. I start on the root of the F major, I skip up to the third, and go down the scale. Do that, just the triplets. Good, so it's a very straightforward part two. I'm gonna do dotted rhythm on the C7 arpeggio, the five chord, and then triplet landing on the F major, our one chord or home. Do it, one, two, Three, pick up, C7, F major. Good, do it again, one, two, three, C7. F major. One more, 
four, two, three. Good. Guess what? We're back to part one. It's an exact repeat at the beginning. Two pickups go up bow. F major. Neighbor tone, G minor. Good. Now I got great news for you. The ending is almost identical to part two. Do the same C7. And then instead of the triplets, just do a horn, pipe, and that three quarter note ending. Bum, bum, bum. That's called a horn pipe ending. And that's what tells you that this tune is a hornpipe or clog feel. Um, and it's really fun because <laughs> you don't have to do anything and it's the where it gets really cheeky. Do the ending, C7. Horn, pipe, and. Ta-da, that's the A section. It's done, it's over. So easy, let's put the whole thing together. One, two, Three, part one, F major, neighbor tone, G minor, part two, C7, triple it, triple it, land, back to part one, neighbor tone, ending, C7, space between the quarter notes. I'm not going smooth. It's, it's too heavy. So detach a little bit. Sounds happier and cheekier and more buoyant. Good. How's it feeling? You notice the second time through, I stopped calling off the mini sections, the hints of what's coming next. And that's because to learn the tune, you have to start taking over calling those things for yourself, right? That's how you claim ownership of the tune. All right, good. So if you'd like some more repetitions on that, rewind as your friend as many times as you need. Let's go on to the B section. Now, I'm going to play two Bs for you. See if you can notice anything familiar. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Despite the fact that the start of the B section is a surprise, all of a sudden we are in the relative minor. Instead of being in F major, we're in D minor. Seems like a whole different universe but not entirely. Two beats. Two, three. <laughs> second half of the B section because instead of doing its own thing for the second half, the B section does what we call a half B construction. That means only half the section is actually B material. For the second half, you go back and play the second half of the A section that you already know. It's a callback. So all you have to learn to finish the entire tune are two tiny little sections. And while they sound very stormy and fancy and cool because of the minor and the triplets, it's actually really easy because it's incredibly patterned. Check it out. I have two pickups with the C sharp, the leading tone to D, 
Now I'm going to play D minor arpeggio in triplets. Same thing with A major. Ooh, it's so spicy, but so patterned. Yeah, so find your D major arpeggio. And you're going to triple it. It's like a little toggle on the arpeggio. Triple it. So that's the root in the lower fifth. Then do the third to the root. And when you hit the fifth, just dotted rhythm your way down. Try that. D minor. Triple it. All the way down. Good. Do it again. Now we're going to do the exact same pattern on an A dominant seventh. Yeah, so there's your A dominant seventh. Start on the third, third to the root, fifth to the third, seventh down the scale. Good, do it again, A seven. Together, that's essentially part one D minor triplet arpeggio and down, A7 triplet arpeggio and down. Let's do it. Two, three, D minor, A major, A7. Nice, and the two pickups is the leading tone to D. Do it again. Two, three. G diminished. And I end on D minor. All right, so check out this diminished chord. So, high second finger to low fourth finger, low second. Many of those chords in a lot of these Celtic tunes. I like it when it shows up. The hornpipes like to do it. So just sound it out. If you haven't done this pattern before, that's okay. Just sing it and find it. Notice that the top is all evens team. I sometimes talk about my hand in odd number team, fingers one and three, and evens open two and four. Those fingers will always kind of govern an arpeggio. So evens team. That's all opens and twos and fours. Good, do it again. Part two, the diminished chord. One more time, and... Now go back for the second half of the A section. A part one. Neighbor tone. Ending C7. And your favorite horn, pipe. And whole B section. Two pickups to D minor. D minor, triple it. A7. Here it comes, diminished. D minor. Back like the A section, like nothing happened.
diminished. like the ace I showed. Horn, pipe, and ta-da! And that's the whole tune. So the half beat construction is really nice because essentially you get half a section for free, <laughs> right? And uh, that first part of the, the B section, again, not difficult. It just sounds fancy because of the dramatic harmonies and because of the triplets. Now, both of these things are really good because we should be used to thinking in chords and arpeggios. We have talked this way low many tunes of the month. If you're new to the series and you're new to thinking about chords and arpeggios and stuff like that, no problem. Just It's a good thing to start practicing like, oh, that's my D minor arpeggio and and toggling around in it, root third, fifth, root third, fifth, fifth third root, third, fifth root. Practice playing around and that will help you a lot. Now the triplet part is actually really useful because what we just did for the standard part of the B section, we're now gonna go back and start applying through the whole rest of the tune, uh, putting in more and more triplets so we build the variations of the tune as we go. So now is a great moment to pause the video and get comfortable with the basic tune that we just played, right? Play it a few times, get really comfortable with each section because you want to understand the skeleton of how the melody is working comfortably before you start variating, all right? I'll wait. Um, and in real time, of course, I don't wait, but hopefully you just paused and got to practice a little bit. Okay, so there's a lot of A section material in this piece, right? The A repeats itself. And then the, P, the B also repeats the A. So we gotta have some stuff happening here, some variation or else it's gonna get deathly boring really fast. Maybe you already noticed that. Okay, so let's look at how we can start putting in triplet variations. When I put in extra triplets, they fall into two categories. An arpeggiation, sort of like what the B section already does in the minor part, or chromatic, traveling. I guess three categories because the other one is neighbor tones. All right, so let's look at part one of the A section. The way it actually goes. Okay, so I'm looking for what parts of those can I play fill in triplets? Can I replace the duos with triples by adding in an extra pitch? So I see right away a really nice arpeggiation. This right here. Ooh, it's already so much fancier. So what I saw is the tune is playing already the G minor arpeggio, but it skips over a bunch of notes. What if I filled those in? Then I actually start and end on the same note. I've just filled in extra triplets. So that's an arpeggiated G minor. Let's do it, part one with an arpeggiated G minor triplet. So that whole arpeggio, I can just splice in the triplet version instead of the duple version. Go back to duple. One, two, three. example of an arpeggiation triplet right there in the beginning. Now if I want a chromatic fill-in triplet, a great place to do that is on the pickup. Rather than if I want to make the triplet into the pickup, I have to chromaticize through the first finger. Low one, high one. Now chromatic triplets are great because they sound extra cheeky and extra spicy, so they fit the style of tune really well. Try the part one with a chromatic triplet pickup. One, two, three. Your choice for the G minor. I chose duple, but you could have chosen triplet, would have worked fine. Try it again, triplet pickup, and let's triplet the G minor. Mm, 
Notice just doing both of those, the triplet at the beginning pickup and the triplet arpeggio, the G minor, it already starts to sound a lot fancier. Let's put in one more set of triplets. I said my other, my third form of triplets that I usually use are neighbor tones. So. Do you see how I did that? So instead of the duple neighbor tone, I'm gonna go neighbor tone. Okay. So what happens if I did all three triplet options? The pickup, the neighbor tone, and the arpeggiated G minor. Try it. One, two, three. playing no triplets to almost entirely triplets. Try it again. One, two, three. And it's still the same tune. It's still clearly the nightingale, but suddenly you're the crazy fancy fiddler doing all those triplets. It sounds like but you know it's not like that. You're actually thinking about three distinct units. The pickup, the neighbor tone and the arpeggio. And all you're doing is amplifying the figuration that is naturally in the tune by tripleting through it, right? Rather than just playing duples through it. Try it again. All available triplets. One, two, three. <laughs> options and I think about it like little light switches over each group that I can either have the switch in duple mode or in triplet mode. So there are right there at least, uh, my permutation math is not so good, nine different ways I can play those two bars with no triplets, just the pickup triplet. How about just the pick, uh, pickup and the neighbor tone but not the arpeggio. How about the pickup, not the neighbor tone, yes the arpeggio. You see what I'm getting at? You could have so many different versions based on whether or not you triplet or duple each of those three instances. Holy cow, you're rich. All right, so let's play for a second. Let's play two A sections. And every time we get to part one, you choose what you would like to triplet and what not. Ready? I'm also going to choose. We may or may not match, and that's okay. One, two, three. Part one, you choose. <laughs> Part one, you choose. Ending. You choose. Part two. parts two and the ending exactly as you've learned them, suddenly it sounds totally ad-libbed, basically improvised, and wildly variant, right? It's not boring anymore because nobody knows what you're going to do. Ah, it's so easy. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not easy. You have to figure out each group, right? Like, you have to figure, how would I turn this duple into a triplet? And then once you find that pattern, once you set the switch, right? So you have a duple option and a triplet option, the light switch in my brain that I visualize, um, then it's easy, right? So this kind of playing takes a little bit of mapping out, a little bit of figuring out, and then it's just flip the switches. Okay, um, if you wanted to triplet part two, it's already kind of tripleted, right? Because this guy. All right, so I could take those out if I want. <laughs> I actually don't do that, but I could. Did you see how I said the triplets are going F major? So I figure out what would that sound like in duple mode, just an F major arpeggio. 
That's one way to do it. <laughs> but if I wanted to put triplets into the C7 arpeggio, I can use some combination of arpeggiating and chromaticing. I'm just gonna try something. I don't usually do this, but. That's not bad. So do you see I was doing the same toggle pattern like what we do in the B section? And the only rule is I have to keep to the C7 arpeggio and land the F major there. So I could totally do that. Um, I was just making those up, figuring that out as I went, because if you listen to my performance, you notice I usually don't triple it that. I usually keep that playing for that. But you can play around with it, and that's not the only path through that C, ma uh, C major arpeggio, the C7. You could find others. Go ahead and play around with it. One thing I do like to do is on the ending, the hornpipe end. It's very cute, but it can get really repetitive. So sometimes I could triple it one of those. And sometimes I put in a little duple, triple it, duple, wham. So that's a variation on the hornpipe ending, right? And I could also, Right? I could do the triplet in the middle. I like the triplet on the beginning. But all of those are variations on the hornpipe ending. You feel it? Okay, let's play two more A sections. Your choice where you would like to duple and where you would like to triplet. You can use the options I've shown you. You can make up your own. It's actually better if you make up your own. <laughs> You'll come up with ideas I haven't yet. Two A's. One, two, three. Three, your choice. Part two. Back to part one. sitting there nicely. My open A goes with the F. Okay, did you find some fun things? Now, what you may notice is every time I play two A sections, whether it's in practice here or in performance at the beginning of the video, the thing that I tend to do is exponentially increase the number of triplets as I go through the tune. That's part of how I build the intensity. So the first time through the A section, I'm gonna play pretty much as written. Same thing with the B section, the purest form. It's on the repeats that I start to add stuff because then people have a sense of the tune growing and growing and getting bigger. And notice when I used all three triplet instances in my part one, I only did it once because you only save, you save your best trick for last and you only do it once. And I put that at the very last part one, right? So we have part one, part two, part one again, ending, part one, part two, part one again, that's the big one, ending, okay? And if I were playing through the tune two times, I would save that for the second time through the tune. I would not do all three part one triplet instances until the second time through the tune. I save my best tricks for later. We call this variation pacing. How do you add triplets like little one at a time, one at a time. And sometimes then I'll take them away, right? That I'll do a, a plain one in, in the middle to kind of clear the board and then I can build again. So this is what the great hornpipe and clog players really have a good sense for is how to build that variation, how to pace it so that way it always feels like something's new and they always have one more thing in their pocket that they can pull out for the last time through the tune, okay? So in that spirit, I'm gonna teleport you now to the end of when I would play this through. I'm gonna to go to the B section. 
Now, you can tell that the B section is already pretty tripleted. <laughs> already quite a lot of triplets there but on my very last B section I bet you heard me do it in the beginning of the video I do what I call the rapid fire triplets and I do that this is kind of a formula I do it in all my dotted clog uh, hornpipe performances I make a variation such that the very last B is totally tripleted here's what I do My last statement of the A is back to the very beginning. No triplets at all. It's my way of being sweet and innocent after being ridiculous. All right. So just to give you an example, I'm going to teach you my version of the ridiculous to finish off here. And then you can either use it and learn it, or you can say that's too ridiculous and take out a couple of the triplets. All right. So the first D minor is already started for us. Now, I am going to triple it down the arpeggio. Notice I have to go a little further this time. The duples just take me to the fifth, the dotted A. If I do triplets, I go all the way down. Try it. D minor, full arpeggiation, full triplets. with the A7, but remember that the duples go down the scale here. So I'm going to do chromatic. Every half step, and it has that like Looney Tunes cartoon falling off a cliff sound to it. And I still land where I need to be. So it's my second finger. Chromaticize the first finger, high, low, open, low, four, three. <laughs> it's so dramatic. Try the A7, arpeggiate up and chromatic scale down. <laughs> Again. together a full arpeggiated D minor and a full triplet with a chromatic scale A major. Arpeggiate down. A7. Chromatic. Good, do it again. notice when I slow it down I have to think about it so diminish and a little chromatic at the end there again already in the original Woo! and at that point it feels very breathless because there have just been so many triplets without a break all right so that's my ridiculousness try the whole ridiculousness and then we'll pop out into a simple beautiful half a like nothing happened ready d minor two three <laughs> And I do not repeat that B 
because again, I would only do this once. I cannot stress enough. Only do your most ridiculous triplets one time, the last time of the tune. Otherwise you've blown your best trick and everything else that comes after feels like a letdown to the audience. So let's try that one more time. This is your last B. Pretend you've just played two A's, two B's, two A's, one B, and now ridiculousness. <laughs> If it's too over the top for you, forget it. I'm ridiculous. I always do that. I always push it farther than it probably should by about a step. And that's how I play clogs. That's the tradition I was raised in. But if you would like to show more restraint in class, hey, I'm not going to stop you. But I wanted to at least give you an idea of what the most ridiculous version could look like. And of course, there are plenty of other figurations, other ways that you could triplet your way through that entire B section that kept constant triplets going. That's just the path that I worked out and like. You're welcome to use it. You're welcome to scrap it. Just ideas. The bottom line is get used to playing with switching triplets and duples. That's the key to this style being so, so, so cool. And the most impressive clog and hornpipe players you've ever heard, this is what they're doing. All right, so I hope that gives you loads of things to play with. As always, if you'd like to see sheet music for this and all future tunes of the month, make sure that you are subscribed to my email newsletter. I send out emails once a month. Uh, and for those who like to stay in touch regularly like that, my special gift to you in that email is the sheet music for the current tune of the month in my own handwritten chicken scratch. Good luck reading it. But if you like dots, that's how to get them. If you are already subscribed to my email newsletter, you already have the nightingale sitting in your inbox, nesting in your inbox. Um, and if you're seeing this in the future, hope it's nice there. And you can uh, join my email newsletter by going to my website, www.mariblack.com and subscribe. And then you'll get all future tunes of the month coming to your inbox very shortly. All right, guys. Have a great time. I'll see you back here next month for more tunes. <laughs>